I'm the only guy brave enough to wear this mic after what happened during the last session. So if this goes out while I'm talking, somebody stand up on a table, wave your hand so that I know that nobody can hear me. So my name is Josh Steimley, and about three years ago, I started writing for Forbes magazine. I manage a digital marketing agency called MWI, and this opportunity to write for Forbes came up not as a full-time journalist, but as a contributor, meaning I don't get paid, but I get to write for Forbes. And I started writing for Forbes, and then that expanded, and I now have written over 200 articles for Forbes plus Entrepreneur, Mashable, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, Fast Company, a bunch of different publications. And the thing about being a contributor is you don't get paid, but people still think you're a journalist, so you get all these pitches from companies. So I have PR firms and people sending me requests every single day, about 50 of them a day, saying, hey, I want you to write a story about my company. Most of these companies are never going to get into the mainstream media, but there are other ways that you can do PR on your own. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. So everybody wants to get these badges. You want to get these logos on your website, right? I wanted to do this. This is part of the reason I started writing for Forbes, is I wanted to get all these logos on my website. And the reason we want to get all these logos on our startup's website or our business website, or the reason that even if we're in government, we're doing something where we're not actually selling something, we still want to get in these publications, is because we want credibility, we want influence, we want to sell a bunch of stuff, if that's what we're doing, if we're selling stuff, and frankly, it just feels kind of nice to have that validation. It's great for our ego to get into these publications. But most people are not going to make it into these publications. So what do we do? Well, the people who do get in traditionally have gone through PR, and they've gone down this route of doing the press release, which Chuck already showed you, press releases don't get read. People don't read those things. Journalists certainly don't read press releases. So press releases are pretty much a waste of money, waste of time if you're doing those because nobody reads that stuff. You can also pitch journalists, which really is begging and it violates your dignity. The journalist doesn't really like the begging. And so usually pitches fail. Most pitches fail. The other way that you can get a lot of PR is if you're Donald Trump. So if you're Donald Trump, it's easy to get PR. I mean, this guy hasn't had to spend a dime on his presidential campaign. He just says stuff, he says crazy things, and he gets all this news attention. It's the most brilliant campaign that's ever been run for the presidency of the United States because it's the cheapest campaign ever, and he's getting more publicity than anybody else. But what are the rest of us supposed to do? If the pitching doesn't work, the press release doesn't work, we're not Donald Trump, how do we get the credibility, the influence, and all that? So what if you didn't need any of that? What if you could get that credibility, that influence, those benefits that you want from those publications, but you didn't have to go and kneel at the altar of those publications in order to get it? So there are three ways that I'm going to share to do this. These are things that I've done for myself, for my agency, for my clients, to get them those results without having to go to these mainstream publications. This is stuff anybody in this room can do. So the first thing is LinkedIn Pulse. Show of hands, how many of you know what LinkedIn Pulse is? Okay, so just a few of you. So LinkedIn Pulse, if you're on LinkedIn, you go up to the interests button in the navigation, click there, there's this thing that says Pulse, and if you go into there, there's this whole publishing platform that a lot of people don't know about. So anybody can publish to LinkedIn Pulse. All you have to do is click there, you click on this publish a post button, and then you add an image, you create a headline, and you start writing. It's a blog post, but it's going to be published on LinkedIn. Now when you publish on the LinkedIn Pulse network, it goes out to everybody that you're connected to, anybody who's following you, and it can go actually quite a bit farther than that. So I did an experiment. I took one of my Forbes articles, I published it on Forbes, and it was an article about getting fit and how this saved my business. I lost a lot of weight a few years ago. And it got 2,765 views as of yesterday. 
Now, that sounds great, right? How many people do we have in this room? Maybe 200 or so. This has gotten over 10 times as many views as there are people in this room. That's great, right? That's a lot of attention. That's a lot of traffic. But I took that exact same article, I copied it, I pasted it onto LinkedIn Pulse. Now, on Forbes, I can publish things, and I'm on Forbes. Not everybody can do that. On LinkedIn Pulse, I'm nobody special. I'm just like anybody else. Anybody can publish anything they want on LinkedIn Pulse. So I took that same content, put it on LinkedIn Pulse, where I'm just a normal person like anybody else, and what happened? 14,000 views on LinkedIn Pulse, and 221 comments so far, and it's growing. So same article on Forbes got a fraction of the views that that article got on LinkedIn Pulse. Anybody can do this. Anybody can post to LinkedIn Pulse and get this kind of traffic to their content. So how do you do this? The key is to get featured on LinkedIn Pulse. If you just post something and it doesn't get featured, it might get 50 views, it might get 100 views, it might get a few hundred views. But if you get the attention of the LinkedIn algorithm, then it gets featured and then you get a lot of traffic to that. Now, we can't go into how to get featured here. We don't have time. My slides are already online. If you go to my Twitter profile, Josh Steinle, there's a link there to my slides. There's a link in the slides to an article on how to get featured on LinkedIn Pulse. The main point I want to drive home today is that this network exists. You can post content there, and you can get major exposure through it. So the next one, BuzzFeed community. How many of you read BuzzFeed? Show of hands again. Okay, so maybe half of you and the other half are just embarrassed to say that they do. So, uh, so BuzzFeed, you know, as this crazy website where there are all these really annoying headlines like, this happened, and when you see what happened, your jaw will drop. They're experts at writing those kinds of cheesy headlines because they work. But BuzzFeed has this section that's kind of like LinkedIn Pulse. It's called BuzzFeed Community. And in the BuzzFeed Community area, Anybody can post here. Again, a lot of people don't know about this, but anybody can go there, set up an account. You can post content to BuzzFeed community. It doesn't have to get approved or anything. You just throw it up there, and it's up on BuzzFeed community. The benefit of this is that now your content is associated with this brand. Somebody comes to, or they see that link, they see, oh, this is on BuzzFeed. They don't know what BuzzFeed community is. They just think it's a normal BuzzFeed article. So you can throw content up here. So what I did was, so you go here, you can click on new post. So we had a client called Beard Brand. They make products for guys with beards. They make beard oil, they make beard grooming kits, all this stuff that I can't use, but they're a client of ours. And we were brainstorming ideas for blog posts for Beard Brand. And one day I was out running and I had this idea, you know what we should do? We should do a blog post on the Beard Brand blog showing what the U.S. presidential candidates would look like if they had beards. That would be interesting. That'd be kind of funny. So I went to Beard Brand with this, and they said, oh, we don't do politics, nothing to do with politics. It's probably a good idea, a good policy for them to have. So then I thought, well, hey, I went to them and I said, can we post this blog post with these presidential candidates with beards somewhere else, and we'll just say that it was a rejected marketing idea that you guys didn't want to run with, and that way you still kind of get the publicity for it, and we can still put this funny content out there. And they said, oh yeah, sure. So I went to BuzzFeed Community, I thought it was a good fit for this, and we posted it on there. So here's this article, what would the 2016 US presidential candidates look like with beards? And I had some guy in Pakistan do some Photoshop work on some of these people, and so you've got Jeb Bush with a beard, you've got Donald Trump with a beard. Um, it distracts from his hair, so that's kind of a good thing for him. Uh, you've got Marco Rubio, you know, he's the Cuban, so I said make him look kind of like Castro. And then I'm a believer in equal rights, so we had to throw the women in there as well. So Hillary Clinton with a beard. So we threw this up on BuzzFeed. And we spent a little bit of money, a very minor amount of money on Facebook ads to drive some traffic there and kind of seed it to get it going. And what were the results that we got from this? In 30 days, 110,000 views of this article on BuzzFeed. A lot of that traffic went through to our client Beard Brand's website. People bought products because of it. They got some SEO value out of it. So this was a successful campaign that was very inexpensive for our client. And 
Again, anybody can do this on the BuzzFeed community site. So, again, the key on BuzzFeed, just like with LinkedIn Pulse, is you want to get featured. And again, we can't go into that here, but how do you do that? There's a link in here, a guy explaining exactly how you get featured in the BuzzFeed community area. And you can find that link on my Twitter profile in the uh, presentation. So, the third way to create content, get it out there for free, and get these results is through SlideShare. If you're not familiar with SlideShare, it's like YouTube for PowerPoint. I don't know about you guys, but me on a Friday night, my wife says, hey, let's go see a movie. And I'm like, why don't we stay home and look at PowerPoint presentations on SlideShare? I mean, that, that's what I want to do. So SlideShare might sound like the most boring website in the world. It's a website full of PowerPoint presentations, but it gets a lot of traffic. And there are a lot of actually quite interesting PowerPoint or uh, slide decks up there. So, I did some experimenting a few months ago. I set up my profile. I started posting slide decks to SlideShare. And within six months, with six slide decks, I generated 70,000 views of my slide decks. A lot of these people clicked through to our website. People contacted us wanting to hire us because of this. We got a lot of real tangible results from these slide decks that I put up on SlideShare. Now, the presentation that I'm doing right now it's already up on SlideShare. Whenever I do a speech like this, or a talk, or something, or I write an article, I take that, I turn it into a slide deck, I stick it up on SlideShare. I've already done the work, I might as well put it up there, and then you get the extra traffic from this. And there are popular slide decks up there that have six slides. There are others that have 200 slides. The popular slide decks do not necessarily have amazing graphics or video or things like that. What they do have is authentic, high-quality, useful, valuable content. And so again, the key here, once again, is to get featured on SlideShare. My six presentations, six in a row, all got featured. So go look at the presentations I've done. Oh, you just saw mine. So this one hasn't been featured yet. I just stuck it up today. But if I'm lucky, this will be the seventh one that gets featured in a row. Once it gets featured, then it gets thousands or tens of thousands of views versus a few hundred. So those are three ways to, or three places that you can publish content for free and generate real tangible results for yourself, for the agency, the organization, for whoever you're working for. So the process that I often follow is, I create a blog post, I write something down, then I copy that over to LinkedIn Pulse, I copy it over to BuzzFeed Community, also Medium if you're familiar with that website. I convert that blog post into a slide share or a slide deck and then I post it on SlideShare and then I share the heck out of this stuff on social media. Every time I do this, I get tangible results from it and it's not that time consuming really to create this content and post it up there. So again, Anybody can do this, and you can get the credibility, the influence, the sales, the ego boost, and sometimes it even leads to that major ma media coverage that you're after. Sometimes journalists see what you're doing here, and they'll contact you and say, hey, I want to write about something you said for a story. So it can give you that uh, media exposure that you're really looking for as well. So again, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Find me on Twitter. That's my blog. Thank you very much.